a little boy who visited our lab in 2012 when he was 10 years old is now grown up and become a chemist and published his first paper and the paper is making a really interesting molecule, historic molecule, thalidomide. And my colleague Miriam is going to repeat this preparation, this synthesis that Eduardo has devised. I'll grab some gloves and then I'll weigh out our first two reagents. All right, so the first reagent I'm weighing out is the L-glutamine and we need five grams of that. Phthalic anhydride, also five grams. Now I'll transfer these to the fume hood. Before we look at the details, let me just take you back to the start. Lots of parents over the years have brought their children to visit Nottingham to meet the periodic video team. It's like a periodic table and you can click on the element and then there's like this video. After being presented with her own laboratory coat, Adele got the chance to watch one of her favourite experiments. But Eduardo's mother was one of the first to bring a child to Nottingham and it was for his 10th birthday. I can remember very clearly. It was probably the day they told me I was going to come there, probably the best day of my life because I was so excited. You can imagine like a almost 10 year old boy and it was like, you were my stars. Like, and uh, yeah, I remember they told me you're going to Nottingham and I was like, oh my God, maybe I'll meet Martin, like, you know, at the supermarket. And they said, you are going to meet Martin. <laughs> and I was amazed, like never been happier probably. He had a great visit. He featured in the university magazine. He gave me a lovely card and he's kept in touch over the years. So we were really excited when he sent us details of this paper. And then the instructions say to pestle and mortar this for roughly two minutes. I'm assuming this helps to break down the phthalic anhydride, which is in rather large clumps here. Miriam, is, is a pestle and mortar common in labs these days? I always think it's like a you know, thing they used to do. Do you guys still do this? It's not something I've used at all um, any time recently. It's something that people definitely used to use a lot in the labs. Um, but one thing that is becoming very popular is a technique called ball milling, um, which is basically the same as pestle and mortaring. And it's a way of doing reactions without using a lot of solvents. So doing reactions in a much more in a much more green way to try and avoid solvent usage as much. So it's, it's coming back, but um, in a slightly different way to, to the, the pestle and mortar that, we, that we're using here. What he has done is to publish, not in a journal, but on a website run by the Royal Society of Chemistry with the name Chem Spider. Nothing to do with spiders, so don't be frightened. And on ChemSpider, it gives what is considered very reliable information about chemicals, their properties, and making them. And he, Eduardo, has developed a simple synthesis for making a drug called thalidomide. It's all about inspiration again, because about a year and a half ago, me and the, my other course mate who you know, did this work with me, uh, we met this... Um, young uh, man who uh, had recently released a podcast which is called Pharmacon uh, which is all about the story behind thalidomide and he is a science communicator and uh, we spent a whole afternoon chatting with him and at the end of the day we said we, th we said to each other well he has a whole podcast about thalidomide but he probably doesn't have any thalidomide in his office you know we could make some and then give it to him just you know for fun because at the time, both me and my friend had a home lab. Uh, now I don't have it anymore because I just recently moved. But uh, so we tried making it and uh, it wasn't as easy as we thought because the molecule isn't that complicated. But the, the procedures were either very old and not very good or they were very new, but they used some exotic reagents that we didn't have, of course. I'm going to add our reaction solvent next, which is toluene. We've got a very useful device here, which is a thermometer that tells us how hot we're heating the reaction. 
I'm going to set that to 110 degrees, which is the temperature that we want the reaction to be at. So the temperature down here is what I've set it to, and 17 degrees is what it's currently at. That will then feed back to the stirrer hot plate, which will keep heating until we've reached that temperature, and then it'll stop heating. So we won't boil all of our solvent off if the temperature gets too high. So now we need to just add two more liquid reagents. What is interesting is that there is only a single step. Usually when you make such molecules you have a whole series of steps. Here you can do it just in one step. Of course you need steps to make the starting materials but the actual putting together is pretty simple. How's things looking in there? Very good. We were expecting to see a colour change within the first hour or so um, to tell us that the reaction is indeed proceeding, starting from the almost colourless phthalamite that we've put into the reaction. And you can see it's turned really nice and dark within the first 10, 15 minutes. So things are looking good. We'll be back tomorrow morning to see what we've made. A lot of the reactions we do in the lab don't change colour. So the first time you know whether it's worked or not is when you do your analysis. So it's really nice to see a reaction that's visually telling you that something is occurring. Thalidomide has a rather tragic history. It was developed, I think, in the late 1950s as a treatment for morning sickness. This is the sickness that some pregnant women experience in the early stages of their pregnancy. It was found after lots of women had taken this drug, which was at the time marketed as being completely safe, that it caused very unpleasant effects or def deformities on their babies, and in particular, their limbs, their arms, their legs didn't develop properly. And it took years for this scandal to be unraveled. It turns out that this is a very interesting molecule because it occurs in two different forms, a left-handed and a right-handed form. And only one of the forms is the one that has the effect that stops people feeling sick. And it is the other one that causes the effects on the babies. Very often when they're drugs with two forms, you can isolate one form and just feed that to the patient and avoid the other one. But thalidomide is very unusual that even if you use just the safe form, in the body it so-called racemizes, it converts to the other one. So there's no way of using it safely for pregnant women. Is thalidomide still useful? Have you done this more as an academic exercise and, you know, just to put new knowledge into the field? Or could there be some usefulness to a new way of making thalidomide? Yeah, we did this only for fun, OK? But it came out after about a year we were doing this. Uh, we discovered it's still useful, actually. Uh, I believe it's used for uh, leprosy. For one of the to cure one of the symptoms of leprosy and maybe some other you know relatively rare diseases uh, but it's not as widespread uh, you know as the 50s or the 60s where it was really used for a ton of different things we're back it's the next morning the reaction has turned a very deep almost black color so you can see that there's there's definitely a reaction that has occurred i've lifted it up, up from the heat i've turned the stir plate off and I'm now going to put the reaction into an ice bath to help it cool down and hopefully crystallize out our product. I've let it cool to room temperature before plonking it in the ice so the glass doesn't shatter with the massive temperature change from the 110 reaction temperature that we had it at. The instructions tell me that it'll crash out while it's in the ice bath. It's definitely done something. I can't, it's so dark that I can't see how much we have. You can see something has crashed out here where it's been sitting in the ice. So I'd say let's filter it, see how much we have. Okay. We're expecting about two and a half grams. It must be nice as a chemist, whether a young man like Eduardo or a more experienced chemist like yourself, it must be lovely when you invent a new method of anything. It's like really pioneering, isn't it? Like it's like a 
It's like a discovery, like finding a planet or something. I think that is why everybody, from being young to people even as old as me, find research so exciting because you can do things that people haven't done before. You can discover things that may not have been discovered before. And so it is, gives you a thrill. That's why if you ask a chemist what is their favorite reaction or what is their most interesting work, they'll usually answer what I'm doing at the moment. It was uh, the first time, hopefully the first of many times, that I felt like a true researcher because, uh, you know, I remember we were doing this in between, you know, lessons at the university, like lectures and everything. So we would work at, you know, night or even evening and then the next morning we would meet <laughs> at our lectures and say, what did you do, you know? And uh, one morning I had a, this very small vial, I still have it somewhere, with a very small amount of white powder. And, uh, you know, it was so, went to take a melting point and it was exactly the one in literature. So we were super excited. That's the whole reason I want to be a researcher in the future, because, you know, even if it's for most people, probably, you know, what researchers do so most of the times isn't really relevant because, you know, it's very specific things. But uh, for you, researcher, you know, you're doing this in the, in the lab and maybe you're just putting like even physical energy into it because you're you know, staying up, maybe or you're working hard in the lab to get something you know, which you can see with your eyes out of it, that's pretty amazing. So this is a small vacuum pump. We've got a filter here that we're going to use to filter our solid. It's, put, it's going to pull the solvent through and the solid will stay at the top. And the pump is pulling a vacuum to speed up that process so we're not just relying on gravity to pull it through. So hopefully what will happen when we pour this in is it will pull through nice and quickly and we don't have to stand here for ages waiting. So this is our product that we've filtered out at the top. It's still a little bit, um, I don't want to say dirty, but we're going to wash it a little bit to, to get it cleaner. Um, the first thing I will wash it with is a um, sodium bicarbonate solution. This is sodium bicarbonate, which is slightly basic in water. The water is the most important, important bit. This will wash out um, the triethylamine that we added, anything that's water soluble in here, any byproducts that we don't want that are water soluble. The thalidomide, our product at the top, will get cleaner and cleaner. We're washing away some of these impurities, some of the byproducts that are formed during the reaction or unrea unreacted starting material. And then I'm going to repeat this washing procedure with diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is an organic solvent, so similar to how we've just removed any water-soluble impurities, we will now remove any impurities that are soluble in organic solvents. And then the hope is that by the end of this procedure, we'll have nice pure thalidomide remaining. Right, we've given, given this about five to 10 minutes to dry. Hopefully the pump will have pulled through all of the solvents and we are left with a nice dry powder. It looks like quite a good amount, yeah. Yeah, that looks like a decent amount. I've pre-weighed a glass vial, so I'm going to transfer our product into the glass vial and then we can find out how much we've made. Nice. The procedure told us to expect about two and a half grams. This weighs in at 3.1 grams. So I think we've, we've done a good job there. My mental maths is not good enough to just do that in my head. So yes, I always do my maths on my glove. We've, we've got a nice mass, but we can't know for sure yet what we've made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up an NMR sample. That's the main analytical technique that we use in a synthetic lab to analyze the products that we've made and that will tell us exactly what we've made and exactly how pure it is as well. I mean, we've, had, we've heard of various processes that get named after chemists, like the Harbour process. This could be the Eduardo process. Um, well, it would be after his surname, probably. But I think 
although I'm a great admirer of what is done, I don't think it is quite in the same class as the harbour process yet. But you never know what his next discovery might be. Purely experimental ones. And uh, yeah, I, I just, well, on YouTube, I basically only watch chemistry or, you know, some little bit of entertainment, uh, but mostly chemistry, yeah. Do you still watch Martin or have you grown out of that? No, I will never grow out of that. I still rewatch the videos <laughs> sometimes. <laughs>